Ms. Joel, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm going to let you kind of introduce yourself and a little bit about where you're from and um, you can start your session. Thank you, Yasmin. Welcome, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with all of you today. So as Yasmin said, my name is Joel and I am a yoga teacher. I'm a mindfulness uh, meditation teacher, as well as a life coach. And my journey of yoga, of meditation started. So I started yoga when I was actually at school. And I used to be someone that was very shy. Um, and the yoga practice really helped me to um, be more confident in my body with myself. And I've been practicing uh, yoga now over 22 years. And it's something that I really recommend uh, every student, every person to really get into the yoga practice, but mostly getting into the mindfulness practice. So I came across mindfulness a little bit later once I had graduated, I was in the workplace and it completely changed my life. And I really wished I knew about it when I was a student at school because it could have really helped tremendously um, to deal with emotions. And I'm really, really happy that nowadays schools are more aware of the importance of that skill of mindfulness and starting to open up uh, and teach kids <laughs> and teach you about mindfulness. Now, today we're going to be talking about tolerance, and tolerance is a very important quality and skill to have, and through mindfulness practice, you could really develop that tolerance, uh, that empathy, that acceptance that I'm going to discuss today. So what is tolerance? So we all know a little bit what tolerance means. And I actually looked it up in the dictionary. And it says that tolerance is the ability or willingness to tolerate something, in particular, the existence of opinions, behavior that one does not necessarily agree with. So basically here, what it says is, let's say you have a friend, okay? Uh, he or she has a different opinion or he or she behaves differently and you don't really agree with it, or it doesn't really resonate with you, so you tolerate it. And I think tolerate is, tolerance is great, and it's really a first step, but it's not enough. I think we need more than tolerance. We need acceptance. So tolerance is, you are, it's a first step. It's great because you're, there's something you don't agree with or, like I said, it's not the same view as yours, and you're just tolerating it, tolerating it, it. For example, like if you look back at world history, tolerance was a great first step for the abolishment of slavery back in America. People were able to tolerate colored or black people and then they abolished slavery but it's not enough. You could still see if some of you maybe listen to the news or know what's happening, you, some of you might be aware that there's still racism out there in the world and we're not accepting people that have a different race, different color, different religion. So acceptance is one step further than tolerance. With acceptance, you no longer see what's different between you and the other people but you rather see that you're all humans, you're all similar. You see what's, what's binding you, you see the similarities. Same thing, if I go back in history, because of tolerance, um, back, I think it was in the, the 60s, in the 1960s, that we were able to be more tolerant with women rights and we were able to give them the right to vote which is great, that's a first step, but acceptance no longer sees um, gender difference between male and, and female. We are all equal, we're all human beings. So today I wanna go a little bit beyond tolerance and talk about acceptance. 
which is really the essence here to live in a more peaceful and enriched world. And you all have that capacity. We all have that capacity within us to develop that skill of tolerance, of acceptance. And through acceptance, we're able to develop more empathy, more compassion, more love, and live in a more peaceful and gentle world. Now, how do we develop that skill? And it is a skill, just like you're learning different um, uh, skills at school, tolerance ac and acceptance and mindfulness is a skill that you can develop, that you can learn. So our tendency as human beings is any time that we feel that there's anything different from us, anything that we're not familiar with, that creates a little bit of fear because it's something we don't know, it's normal. If, uh, for example, I bring a, a box that's dark and I ask you to um, put your hand in it, you're gonna be scared because you don't know what's inside. Maybe there's a spider, maybe there's a candy, who knows, right? So whatever we don't know, whatever we are not familiar with creates a bit of fear. And this is why people are not tolerant. They're not tolerant and they're not accepting of things they don't know. But when you're able to let go of that, when you're able to open your mind, become curious about things you don't know, that's how you enrich your life. Not only you're able to be more tolerant, more accepting, more accepting, more loving, but you're also able um, uh, to really expand your mind. So today we're going to talk about how to expand your mind, how to be more curious, how not to be scared of what's different. So first, it starts with yourself. And I often tell my students that everything you do in life starts with yourself. If most people that are not tolerant, that not accepting, they're not loving, they're not loving or accepting or tolerant with themselves. So it really starts with yourself. How are you uh, judging yourself? Are you judging yourself? How are you accepting yourself? How are you loving yourself? And this is very, very, very important. Because if you cannot accept or love yourself, you won't be able to love and accept others. So it really starts with yourself. And this is where mindfulness practice can really help, help us. With mindfulness practice, you start developing more awareness. So mindfulness, the word mindfulness means to be, to be fully aware, to be fully, your mind is fully focused on what's happening within you first, okay? And I'm gonna lead you today in a short practice of mindfulness, a physical and a seated practice. So you get an experience of what mindfulness is all about. So when you start being more aware, more mindful of, first of all, physical sensation, but most importantly of your thoughts, what do you think of yourself? What are your thoughts patterns? Are you always criticizing yourself, being hard on yourself? So when you start noticing that, this is where you're able to make a choice to say, no, I'm not gonna be um, sabotaging myself. I'm not gonna be criticizing myself. I'm gonna love myself. I'm gonna accept myself for who I am. So it really starts with yourself. When you're able to love yourself, accept yourself, this is how you're able to bring love and acceptance and tolerance out into the world. And with that self-awareness, with that mindfulness, you start developing empathy. So empathy is a skill which is when you're able to sense your emotions, you're able to observe your mind, really see what's happening in your mind so you can take the right decision of what thoughts you want to let in and what thoughts you're gonna say, no, I don't want to self-criticize myself. When you're able to develop that sense of mindfulness with yourself, you're able to be more mindful of others. 
So empathy is a skill that you gain through mindfulness where you're able to sense other people's feelings, their, um, their, their features, you know, their, their, um, how they feel, uh, you know. So, so for example, you're at school and uh, your teacher asks a question to your peer student, okay, to your friend. And your friend doesn't know the answer, so they're all stressed out and they start sweating and they're biting their lips. So empathy or awareness is you recognizing how your friend or the other student feels, okay? So you're able to be empathetic that, oh, my friend is stressed out. She, she or he doesn't know the answer. And with mindfulness, you're able to be empathetic. With empathy, you're able to be more accepting and compassionate. So when you're able to recognize that, that's when you feel concerned. So compassion is about feeling concern for your friend, for other people, and wanting to help them, feeling concern for their trouble, for their pain, or for whatever they're, they're feeling. So I'll be discussing a little bit more tomorrow about empathy and compassion. Uh, so you could join in tomorrow. But today I really want to focus on that self-awareness um, and uh, self-love and acceptance, which really starts with yourself. And in our practice today, we're going to do a, a little short uh, mindfulness practice or meditation practice for you to really develop that skill of being mindful of your emotions so you can take the right action to love yourself, to accept yourself. So this is the first way to be more accepting, loving, and tolerant. There's also other ways to be more accepting, to uh, tolerating, and loving other people. So nowadays, you know that we are all, right now I'm connecting with you through my computer. I could be anywhere in the world and I'm still able to connect with you. And this is the beauty of technology nowadays. So you can perhaps start a new project at school connecting with other students throughout the world, trying to see what are the similarities between you. So maybe connecting with a school in Africa or in Australia, and then asking them, connecting with them, what's their favorite class? Um, what's their day like? And then seeing how you guys are similar. What are their fears? What are their dreams? And maybe asking them how they want to change the world and maybe starting something across uh, nations, working together to change the world. These are ways to really connect, accept, and see similarities between students, between people to be more accepting, more tolerant, and more loving. And our differences is what makes our strength and our power. You can even look in your own family. So perhaps you have siblings, brothers, sisters, and even in the same family that you have the same culture, same religion, uh, same uh, race and everything, you are all different. You're not the same as your brother or your sister. But Yes, it's true sometimes those differences might annoy you and you fight with your siblings, but at the end, you love each other. And it's these differences that make that synergy into the family. This is what enriches the family. Imagine if you were all together, how boring that would be. It's those differences that really puts that energy, that spice into your life and into the family. So that diversity, those differences of culture, religion, um, uh, political views, ways of seeing the world, this is what enriches our lives. And this is how you can expand your mind by learning, by being curious about things you don't know. And you are really lucky as this young generation uh, the generation of millennials that nowadays, not only you are connected through technology, 
but also you have an advantage compared to your predecessors that you really are focusing nowadays on happiness, on what matters, on happiness, on well-being, on, um, so on, on body-mind connections. You're no longer like your predecessor focusing only on success, on money and on power. And this is a beautiful, beautiful advantage that you have because you are the leaders of tomorrow. And through this acceptance of diversity, um, through this acceptance of different people, you are able to change the world. You are the leader. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's keep your microphone off. Okay. So I'll just uh, okay. want to. I'll just want to conclude here yeah, with that. There is no class computer, class and home uh, workshop. Ella, may I ask you to keep your microphone off, please? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no worries. Microphone. So, how, so let's conclude this and we're going to jump onto our mat in a minute. So as the leaders of tomorrow, as I mentioned, you have this chance to really change the world and peace is not achieved by having everybody the same but peace is achieved by having pe people from different culture different religion different uh, thoughts that are brought together that brings that diversity that brings that enriching culture and this is how peace is, is achieved by accepting everybody for their differences, their powers, uh, the skills that they could bring. Okay, so I'm going to leave you here before we jump onto the mat uh, to really open your mind, starting with yourself, being more self-accepting, self-loving with yourself, and bringing that out to the world, being curious wanting to know about different culture, connecting, like I said, with people from different nations, different schools to learn, to expand your mind. And this is how you can really not only enrich yourself as a human being, but really bring that peace and love into the world. So let's jump onto the mat. I'm gonna lead you into a yoga practice mindfulness yoga practice and then we'll do a very short um, meditation or mindfulness practice so i'm just going to connect right now so i'll just leave you for two seconds okay so if you have a mat i'll invite you to find your mat if you don't have a mat that's fine so just find a place where you have a little bit of space And we're going to come into standing and just keeping your feet about hip distance apart and just roll the shoulders back, keep your spine tall and just go ahead and close your eyes here. So just standing tall, closing your eyes, taking a deep breath in through the nose and a deep breath out through the nose and really close your eyes. And I want you to just start sensing how does it feel to be standing onto your feet. You could even move forward and back, rocking forward and back, starting to feel that connection of the floor of the earth beneath you. So starting to bring your awareness to your feet and feel how does this feel? And then moving your awareness up to the legs. So how does it feel to be standing? Really engaging your legs, strong legs, lifting the spine tall, rolling the shoulders back. How does it feel to stand tall like a mountain? This is called the mountain pose because it's strong, it's firm, and it's tall. Good. And we're gonna just warm up here with sun salutation. So sun salutation are a warm up movement to create that sun energy, to create energy into the body. So we're gonna go ahead and reach the arms up 
and feeling how does this feel to lengthen, to stretch up, trying to touch the ceiling. And as you breathe out, just open the arms and just fold over to the ground, hands onto the floor, relax your head. And then bring the hands to your legs, lengthening the spine as you breathe in. And then bend the knees, bring the hands flat and step the right leg, bring the right knee onto the floor, okay? We're gonna inhale, reach the arms up, push the hips forward, looking up towards the ceiling. And then release as you breathe out, the hands to the floor and step back into downward dog. So downward dog is like an inverted V. You're pushing yourself away from the floor and just hold it here. As you push away from the floor, try to touch the heels to the floor. And I want you to be aware. So bring your awareness to the body, feeling how does this feel in your legs as you push away from the floor. How does it feel in your chest, in your spine? So you should feel a deep lengthening. So the first step for self-awareness is being aware of the sensations in the body. Let's take one more deep inhale. And deep exhale, breathing out. From here, let's come on to all fours. Bring the knees to the floor. And we're gonna slowly bend the elbows and scoop chin chest, lie down onto the belly, hands stays next to your chest, lift up into a cobra, pushing away from the floor, relax the shoulders, look up towards the ceiling. How does this feel? Again, bring your awareness to the body, breathing deeply. Do you feel the stretch into the back, into the spine? Take a deep breathe in and breathe out. Good. Now from here, slowly roll down onto the belly and then press up into all fours and press back into a downward dog. Again, relax your head. You're looking at the feet pushing away from the floor. Now this time we're gonna stick a giant step with the right leg and bring the left knee down. Again, reach the arms up, push the hips forward, opening the chest, looking up. And then as you breathe out, bring the hands to the floor, take a big step with the left foot, feet to the front together, and just fold over the legs. Root the feet to rise all the way up. And then bring the hands to your heart. Good, let's try this again. We're gonna inhale, breathe in, reach the arms up, look up. And then breathe out, open the arms, stretching as you come all the way down. Lift halfway up, looking up. And then bend the knees, step the spine, the left leg back, giant step back, left knee down. Breathe in, opening the chest, push the hips forward, look up. And breathe out, bring the hands to the floor and step both feet back into downward dog. Hold it here, we're gonna hold for one. Breathe in and breathe out. For two, breathe in and breathe out. And for three, breathe in and breathe out. Coming on to all fours, hands and knees. Again, bend your elbows, scoop chin, chest, lie down onto the belly, roll the shoulders back and lifting up like a cobra, pushing away from the floor, looking up, feel that nice and beautiful stretch into the spine. So this is a beautiful stretch, especially if you sit a lot on your computer. Good. And then come back, roll back down, push up into all fours, and extend the legs into your downward dog. Now we're gonna step the left foot forward, giant step, bring the right knee down. As you breathe in, reach the arms up, 
push the hips forward and breathe out, release the hands to the floor. Take a giant step with the right foot forward and then fold over the leg, relax your head. Root the feet, come all the way up and bring the hands to your heart. Let's do this again. Now you know the sequence. Inhale, reach the arms up and really bring your awareness to the body. Breathe out, open the arms, fold forward. Lift the head up, bend the knees, step the right leg back, right knee down. Breathe in to push the hips, reach the arms up, feel that stretch, how it feels in the body. Breathe out, open the arms out, and step back into downward dog. From here, we're gonna hold it here, breathe in, breathe out for one, breathe in. Every time, stretch a little bit deeper, two, breathe in, breathe out for three. Coming on to all fours, drop the knees, and from here, bend the elbows, slowly lie down onto the bed, Roll the shoulders, cobra, inhale, lift up. So maybe now you can move deeper into cobra, looking up and then slowly roll down. Lift up, curl the toes into all fours, press back into down or down. Step the right leg forward, left knee down, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, bring the hands to the floor. Step both feet to the front, forward, forward. Root and rise like a beautiful flower. Hands to the heart. Last time, just moving with your breath and observing sensation of your breathing. Breathe in, reach up. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, lengthen the spine. Bend the knees as you breathe out, step the left leg back, left knee down. Breathe and reach the arms, opening the hips, looking up. Breathe out, release the hands to the floor. Step back into downward dog, that inverted V, pushing away from the floor. Hold it here. So does, try to see if this downward dog feels deeper than the first one you did. Hold it here. For one, two, and three. Now coming into our fours, we're gonna slowly bring the chest to the floor, onto the belly, roll the shoulders back, lift up into Cobra, looking up towards the ceiling. Exhale, roll back down. Curl the toes, lift up into all fours, press back into down or down. Now take a giant step with the left leg, right knee down. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, release the hands to the floor. Step both feet to the front into forward fold, head down. Root and rise, come all the way up and bring the hands to your heart center. Close your eyes, coming back into mountain pose. So open the arms to the sides, just close your eyes and just take a moment here to be aware of all the sensations in the body. Observing, how does my body feel? How do I feel? physically, but also how do I feel emotionally, mentally? So just take a moment to take note of that, to observe that with your eyes closed. Just really bringing your awareness to the body, to the mind.
Good. And from here, so I'm gonna guide you through a very short meditation. So we're gonna come into seated. So for meditation, you have two options. You could sit cross-legged if it feels comfortable, keeping the spine tall, or you can lie down. Okay, so you could just lie down. Now, the danger with lying down is you don't do meditation, but you do sleepitation, is that you fall asleep. And it's okay. If you're tired, you can sleep, you can relax. So choose whichever position is better for you, sitting or lying. So generally, I always recommend my student, if they're very stressed out and having a lot of thoughts, to just relax and lie down. But if you're feeling too sleepy, then keep your spine tall and come into seated. And I'll be guiding you through a meditation, a mindfulness practice, which is a great skill for you to have for the rest of your life. So go ahead and find that position lying down or seated and close your eyes and try to stay in that side in, into silence just for a few seconds here. No more noise. Just close your eyes and just observing the breath as you breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the nose. Just breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. And I want you to observe the breath. I want you to become curious with your breath as if it's the first time you are breathing. Just observe how your breath is flowing through the nostril, into the belly to inflate belly, ribs and chest as you breathe in and how the belly, ribs, and chest comes down as you breathe out through the nose. Observe, follow the breath. Just staying here a few seconds, observing the breath. So just simply breathing helps us to relax the mind and to disconnect from whatever activity you are doing. Just stay with your natural breath. You could always use this technique of breathing just to relax the mind. And then I want you to sharpen your awareness, become even more curious. I want you to start observing the breath at the entrance of your nostrils. And try to see, is one nostril, the right or the left, making most of the inhale? And if the right or the left is making most of the exhale? So observe that. For most people, we don't breathe in equally through both nostrils. There's always one side working more than the other, and then it switches every hour. So observe which nostril is doing most of the work. Observe the sensation as the breath enters the nostril. Is the air cold or warm as it enters the nostril? And what's the temperature of the breath as it exits the nostril? Really looking at all the details, really focusing your mind. Observing the sensation, the pressure of your breath on the nostril. Can you feel that little tingling sensation right there at the tip of the nostrils? At the entrance of the nostril.
and just stay with your breath. Now I want you to bring your awareness to your whole body as you breathe in, keeping your eyes closed. Observing the sensation of your breath throughout the whole body. What do you feel every time you breathe in and breathe out? Do you feel that expansion in the body as you breathe in that renewed energy, that vitality? And do you feel that sense of relaxation as you breathe out? Just observe sensations of the breath in the body. Really look closely, as if you're looking through a microscope, this imaginary microscope, looking at what's happening within your body. And now that your mind, your body is relaxed, keeping your eyes closed, we're going to start looking at the thoughts, the, looking at the cinema of the mind. So imagine you're sitting at the cinema. You're just coming to watch the movie of your mind on that screen of the mind. And just observing what's coming up, observing thoughts, sensations, images. Just being aware, how do you feel? What are the thoughts right now coming up? Maybe you're enjoying this, maybe you're not enjoying this, but try to observe all that self-talk, all the images, all the thoughts, just observing them without any judgment, just observing them from a distance, as if you're sitting in the cinema, observing what's coming up onto your screen. So we have five more minutes of meditation. Okay. And as you observe, trying to see what are the thoughts that are welcoming, empowering, and perhaps what are the thoughts that are not so empowering, that are not about love, acceptance, and tolerance? Recognizing that and letting go of whatever is not empowering me, whatever is not helping me. You have the choice to choose your thoughts, to choose your mental state. So recognizing that. And you could always replace thoughts with positive one. If you feel fear, you could replace it with a sense of courage. If you feel hatred, replacing it with love. And from here, letting go of all the cinema, of your thoughts, of your images, just coming back to the body, coming back to the breath, keeping your eyes closed. I'm just taking a few seconds here just to rest into that stillness, resting as you observe the breath. Just resting into that stillness and that awareness. And whenever you're ready, taking a deep inhale. 
And as you exhale out through the nose, slowly open your eyes. If you are lying down, very, very slowly rolling onto your side and making your way into seated. So taking your time, don't rush. And if this was the first time that you did either a yoga practice or meditation, so sometimes meditation, especially if it's the first time, it's not very easy. We get a lot of thoughts, a lot of distraction, but just like anything that you practice that you do, it just gets better and you need to practice. And the more you practice yoga or mindfulness, the more you will start seeing how you're able to feel more peaceful, more aware. You're able to really observe the thought process and decide what thoughts you want to keep, what thoughts are garbage that you don't no longer need. And through this practice of mindfulness, of awareness of the body first and of the mind, you are able to expand your mind, be more self-aware of yourself, being more aware of others as well, more empathetic. And this is how we build the skill of love, of acceptance, of compassion, and of tolerance. Now, if you enjoyed the session, tomorrow I will be talking more about empathy and compassion, which are important skills for our tolerance. And I'll be doing a different um, meditation and different yoga practice. So thank you very much, everyone. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Mm -hmm. In the chat room. Um, or you can, yeah, so if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat room. Otherwise, we will be sending out a survey where you could share your feedback or um, any notes that you may have for today's session. We really hope that you guys enjoyed the session, that you've meditated, that you're mindful, and thank you so much for participating.